we are an NGO dealing with uh, mainly with architectural issues and uh, most of us are architects and we are dealing with different topics in architectural field like spatial planning and sustainable building and cultural heritage maybe mainly cultural heritage we started with that issue and uh, when we were we have been invited by uh, med partners to consider partnership in sustainable project our first thought was we are not dealing with culture uh, yes, with cultural heritage, but culture in that sense, like culture as a force for social, economic and development, uh, this is not our topic. And our first thought was to recommend some other NGO from Montenegro dealing more with culture. But then they encouraged us, and I'm very grateful for that, to consider once again and to think if uh, we can find some links and some connections between culture and urban development and of course it is very much linked and then it was a real challenge for us to think how uh, what can we do in our field uh, in order to use culture as this force of urban development and, and territorial development so we have decided to, to work in the field of um, uh, with, to work with municipalities, uh, uh, some kind of management, and to try to bring together three municipalities uh, in our region to work to de together on uh, uh, local cultural strategies, local cultural policies. And that was another big challenge for us. First, because uh, uh, we do not, uh, in Montenegro, we recognize only municipalities. We do not have regional uh, division. And uh, for us, it was a, a challenge how to, to make uh, municipalities work together in, in this field and how to somehow uh, encourage them, uh, being an NGO. And uh, uh, we uh, try to provide uh, this development of local cultural policies in, as a highly participative process. And that was also a challenge for us because in Montenegro, um, basically planning, not only cultural planning, but also urban planning and every other, any other kind of policy making is not uh, really participatory process. It is usually, um, uh, it is usually trying to involve uh, citizens or various stakeholders in the later stages of, uh, of, uh, of uh, process of development of policies. Uh, we're trying to make some kind of change and in, this, uh, in this project we try to uh, involves various stakeholders and citizens from the very beginning and to and somehow to, to make really participatory uh, policy documents. So I would say this would be the challenge for us. Okay, thank you, Tanya. Uh, Maite, you also were, uh, what was your biggest challenges, for example, as Tanya, you also worked in a really even larger region, most, uh, with different cities and really trying to find the league between people working with arts, people with, with working with crafts, then the farmers, I think. Uh, so maybe you can share some experience. What was the big, I mean, this is by itself already, of course, a challenge, but yeah. um, maybe you can explain us a little bit. You will speak in French, I guess, so. The challenge for us was uh, to carry out the project successfully. It was difficult because it was our first European project. It was a big project and Chitema didn't have any built structures, existing structures. And for us it was a big challenge. And then there was another challenge concerning the land, the area, because we had to involve municipalities to work with us, to work together. And that was not very easy. And to do that, we had the support of uh, other pa European partners that came to visit us. They met these municipalities. They fought to support the projects. It was the second stage, the second large uh, challenge. And then we had to involve uh, crafts people to involve them in, in the reflection and action in the framework of the Sostenuto project. The challenge in that case was to help them understand was, what Sostenuto was. First of all, we talked to the crafts uh, 
and arts people, we who tried to explain to them through brochures, but this didn't work. And so we had to see how we could address them, first of all. And this was the great uh, difficulty. So instead of uh, preparing seminars or exhibitions or other events, what we needed to do was to involve them directly in the reflection that we were carrying out with our partners. And that was a great experience to make them take part in the first stage of the Sostenuto project. Our stage in Ljubljana in 2010, we took with us our crafts uh, people, the manager of the job center of the Tosca Tuscany region. And so they came with us to take part in writing down the manifesto and the exchanges. It was the first time where through a specific experience we understood how we had to address them. This was uh, the greatest challenge. I can say this now because it's already completed, but the first difficulty was to understand how we had to address our cluster and explain what a sostenuto was, that is, uh, make them take part in their reflection. Well, I, 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 I have not finished. There was another challenge. We wanted to enlarge the cluster and we wanted to address uh, other people that had the same problem that crafts people, that is farmers. It was uh, more simple because uh, we already had some practice and experience with crafts people and so we wanted to involve farmers in the uh, preparation of an event in Italy with uh, crafts people and so we explained what we wanted to do to them and their reaction challenged us because uh, they said, well, the cluster, yes, governance is fine with us, but who is going to come to the event because uh, we are in a small town and we, you need an audience for an event. And so they said uh, this brochure with uh, all these European words is uh, fine also, but who is going to come with us? And we were in the framework of a European uh, project and we had to use certain words in these brochures. We didn't include definitions, but well, some kind of definitions and we used their way to communicate with each other. And this is how we started to enlarge the cluster and uh, address different kinds of uh, audiences. Thank you. Maite, thank you, Maite. I think um, it is uh, very interesting to hear about Hello. your experience. Um, uh, Ferdinand? Maybe yes. I pass to you. Now you already explained a little bit uh, the, some of the challenges, the larger and, and uh, yeah. but besides really being a lead partner, which already is uh, really a task of uh, mm. itself, maybe what were, um, what were your major challenges in the, you are already used to work in Mediterranean world, very, we have a big experience on international cooperation also, but uh, what was kind of new for you? What was challenging for you? Well, actually, um, the lab we had in the project was a part of our activity, which is this uh, um, micro, uh, cultural micro businesses incubator. We have this incubator since a few years, before we started the project, actually. And we have in this incubator more or less uh, 15 to 20 uh, young uh, project leaders, people, persons who, 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 who aim, who try to um, start a cultural business uh, in our region. And of course, all those are French from the South. Um, and as I said before, uh, our business is very much uh, centralized, you know, uh, uh, 
capital city oriented, uh, you know, it's very much oriented in the center. And so the difficulty for us was to first make these young project carriers understand the reality of their colleagues in the, in the next region. So Sostenuto was very interesting because we brought people from your regions, uh, the same type of people, young people with uh, micro businesses, cultural micro businesses, to our young project uh, carriers that they can understand each other and see the reality of each other and try to create some links with them. So that was difficult because this business is, the, 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 is so traditional in a way, this music business, that you cannot really uh, break the rules like that. You cannot decide that you will start a network with uh, a local networks with uh, friends around the Mediterranean. The, the major companies will not let you do that. And this is uh, one of our failure, it, not a failure, but uh, so far we are not yet there. So we have contacts with these young promoters all around our regions, but it is to be said that so far the, the business network between them is not working, not yet. At least they understand each other, which is very good, and they understand the relationship and the situation in each country. One of the very good things we did also, and this, I will stop after that, is that <clears throat> we organize collective uh, travels of about 10 to 15 young uh, project carriers. They go together for a week. We prepare that week. They go in a big city. This time it was Brussels, of course. And they go together. We organize visits, uh, not only of the institutions, but also of uh, other businesses there, and so they meet colleagues, and it was very inter It was for me one of the most interesting phase of the project is that we organized in uh, 2009 a collective travel with five of our French uh, <coughs> um, project carriers and five of your uh, uh, colleagues that you sent us. That was very exciting. They went the ten of, of them together to Brussels to try to make business contact, to try to create some kind of synergy together. And the most exciting is that when they were together in Brussels, they were considered by our contacts in Brussels they visited like a very coherent force, like if they have been working together since years, which was not the fact, actually, because they did not know each other so well. <coughs> but from outside, from, from the north point of view, they were representing some kind of cultural force working together, which is very interesting. But so far, yes, uh, we are not yet there. We need, this is maybe something we will discuss tomorrow, we need to go further. I mean, two years and a half is nothing. In terms of creating local development networks and things like that, two years and a half is nothing. We need much more. <coughs> Thank you, Ferdinand. Um, there are already a few things which are kind of coming through that maybe we can discuss later on, but uh, Sam, <coughs> I would give you the word uh, uh, maybe to, to tell them. <laughs> uh, thank you. So since uh, we have some EU-level decision makers here today, I will just briefly uh, point out uh, one factor of the project that I think we can all agree made, uh, made the work a little bit difficult, namely this is the administrational and the financial uh, difficulties that we were facing uh, because of being an NGO applying to the structural funds. Uh, I must say that they are far from being uh, NGO friendly and that um, uh, it's a pity that a lot of times we were dealing with uh, administrational and technical difficulties and problems and that left, left less room for uh, you know, problems concerning the content of our work. Uh, but when mentioning this, uh, I would like to go to the difficulties we were facing with the content of our work. And uh, I have to say that... Uh, Probably not all of you know that um, different laboratories of Sustenuto had different topics. So, so Bunker's topic was local exchange trading systems. And I have to admit that at the beginning um, we didn't have quite 
sufficient uh, knowledge uh, on the topic. This is an economic issue. We produce art. Um, but I also have to say that we learned quite a lot about it quickly and uh, we quickly learned the benefits and uh, also the restraints of uh, local exchange trading systems. And uh, even though in the uh, and I also must tell that uh, we were doing a lot of small projects instead of one continuous big one. So in the beginning, um, we were doing uh, projects about local exchange uh, trading systems connected to culture, but we really found out the limited impact that they have. So we focused, uh, we changed our focus just a little bit and adopted the sor sort of the, you know, the whole project maxim of Sostenuto, which is how culture and art can be a factor of social change. And I think that this, uh, this action really gave us the freedom to experiment and uh, also, yeah, uh, this is my personal view. With this, we gained quite a lot more uh, space to maneuver and to be creative uh, with, uh, with the actions that we planned. And um, um, yeah, so this was, this was one major difficulty at the beginning of the project. Then, of course, as we started to implement concrete activities, at first, you know, we, we weren't quite sure if we're going in the right direction. Um, but uh, as soon as we received the feedback uh, from the initial projects, we sort of you know, realized what we are doing uh, has an impact and uh, is effective to some extent. I, I won't say that all social and economical problems can be resolved through uh, cultural projects, but um, um, on a local level, I would argue that uh, you can change a lot through, uh, through art. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, some of the maybe the key words which were kind of going around for, and were important for me in these challenges were actually how to work together and how to make the others participate. Uh, um, well, even this morning we were st still s turning a little bit around one, I would say, a little bit elderly concept of arts and culture, which would make like a two, two, two sides of the of, of the same medal. One is, on one side you have the the ones who produce art and artwork and culture, and on the other side, the ones who are consuming it. And, and what is actually, or for us, was actually interesting, and I don't know, this experience we went through was actually, there is a lot of space in between which needs to be challenged. So there is not this, again, market provider, more, etc. But how to make the links between artists, uh, general cultural world in a very large sense, uh, audiences, consumers, also authorities, you were saying, we're talking about, and um, general civil society, which is maybe, because we know what is our audiences now in Europe, you, you know, it's mainly well-off audiences, uh, mm, mainly white and mainly, um, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is. Uh, so how? So what? How, where do we? Where do we get to that? That we are, that we do something which is socially more engaging. I think it's a big challenge for all of us. And uh, so another cliche also is also that we, when we talk about social issues, we also think about only the groups uh, which are more vulnerable. But I think it's, there is something that we that the kind of social cohesion of, of all of us, how we can improve our social uh, dimension, I would say. Um, but how can be, all these processes are somehow, at least if I talk for Bunker also, are, um, although we have luckily have, we're documenting them, so on videos you can see some videos, but uh, com in compared to what we usually do, which is festivals, theaters, concerts, these are more, it's much more soft tissue that we were developing on a longer scale. And uh, the effects are difficult to, and more difficult tangible. So it was quite a difficult task, I guess, for, for uh, University of Valencia to make, uh, or to even to modelize what we do. But nevertheless, we can try to, can we try to, to see how we change maybe as organizations through this process? Did, did we change something? Or, and also, 
do, do we perceive any kind of concrete changes around, around us on the uh, territories? Territory is also something that we worked on. Either it would be the entire Boca Bay or Toscany. For us, it was really very close neighborhood. And for you, it was maybe Marseille, but also larger than Mediterranean yes. region, I would say. So maybe you can just explain a little bit or maybe even illustrate with some small examples. No. I will pay, make the same turn, yeah. Thank you. Uh, as for our part of the project, uh, I, I wish to believe and I really believe that the, the, the results are really going to produce a change and particularly the main result which, uh, which is uh, three local cultural policies for the period of next uh, five years for uh, local municipalities of Kotor, Tivat and Herzegnovi, which is the region where we worked. Uh, but uh, also not only the product, not only the result, but the process itself. What we really learned from, from this experience is that the process of participation and involving and producing together with people, with stakeholders, is equally, maybe even more important than the result itself. Although I, I do believe that the result itself is, is, uh, is also good. Uh, so um, I really believe that this will produce the change. And then um, also very important uh, issue for us in our project is linking and networking, uh, both uh, on this level of partnership, uh, which was for us really a huge uh, challenge because this was the first time for us to work with uh, in a, such a big project with a lot of European Union partnership. Uh, pa partners, uh, we used to work a lot in partnerships, but mainly in the region and on the local and national level. So uh, linking on this level and also uh, linking of different stakeholders, various stakeholders uh, in our municipalities. Uh, and uh, I think that will be, that is going to be uh, bring benefits, uh, not only for this project, but for the future development of different activities in our region. And um, perhaps uh, to mention one more uh, issue that I think will bring some kind of change is the, some certain kind of uh, local methodology, methodology of our, our initiative, which I believe is going to be used for uh, other municipalities uh, in Montenegro, because uh, this uh, activity that we did in Montenegro is the first of that kind uh, for culture for Montenegrin municipalities, and it is a legal obligation. It is a, it is obligation for municipalities to create these kind of documents, and we we plan to provide this methodology and to offer it to other municipalities in Montenegro. And I believe that uh, they will find it useful and inspiring. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Maite. Alors, euh, ce qui a changé euh, pour nous le projet Sostenuto, <rire> bah, euh, tout d'abord, on est arrivé à relever le défi. The Sostenuto project. <rire> Jusqu'à ça devrait marcher. Well, we responded et, euh, donc, to the challenge. On a aussi gagné confiance en nous. And et on a aussi changé. We have euh, also gained confidence in ourselves. We have changed the way in which we conceive a partnership. We, the type of partner, we are much more open and less focused on the cultural structure. And this was good for artists, craftsmen, but it was good for us to see who we could work with. And the Sostenuto project enabled us to work with the faculty of economics, with structures like Bunker that normally we wouldn't have worked together with. Maybe we were too self-centered, so this was a great experience for us. Also, our place in the territory has changed on both a local and territorial level. Following the latest event, we have been recognized by 
the rest of the region and this has enabled us to build a project with other organizations. Also, the, our public in the cluster have changed their opinion of us and they understand us better and they trust us more. This was a tremendous change, in fact. And there was something else I wanted to say. I wanted to conclude by saying that all of the team of Chitema are very grateful to have found such exceptional people to work with. We're very grateful. I'm very optimist. I'm sorry, but uh, if you're not optimistic, uh, things uh, I don't think things work. It was a great change. In fact, for a me, the structure that has existed for more than 27 years. We have a great structure. We have nine employees. This structure works. It works well. And we had a threat with all the changes in the ministerial budgets. We <coughs> were at risk because the uh, culture in France is uh, going through a difficult time, and we had to work. In the short term, we had to come up with short-term plans to try and save the situation. But this project, which is a multi-annual project, is uh, good. But nonetheless, we work with a yearly budget. We need to have our budget, our yearly accounts, and so on. But with this project, we have been able to integrate our activities, all of our activities, in a more coherent, integrated concept. Before, we used to manage our projects, and depending on the needs, but it's good to be able to look at the longer term, to talk about something over a period of two years, for example. In our team, some people are more involved in the project, and uh, some people don't understand exactly what we're doing, but now, after two and a half years, everybody understands that this is a fundamental project, that it enables us to survive, it enables us to look towards the future, to look beyond ourselves, and to defend our image in the face of uh, different institutions. So we're on the local agenda again, and that's good for us. And regarding the technique of our incubator company, I don't Sur les processus même de l'accompagnement des, des porteurs de projets, uh, ça n'a pas changé énormément de choses, mais c'était pas forcément l'objectif. Mais je pense que le I projet que uh, the project prendre de la hauteur, promoters de une distance plus longue, c'est quand même uh, were successful in the fact that we can now Merci. look at a more uh, long-term project, and that's very good for our structure. Thank you. Uh, so, um, I would say that uh, Sostenuto made a considerable impact on both the, on both the territory that uh, our organization was targeting with the projects and also our organization. And uh, to name just a few consequences of our engagement in the local quarter, I would say that in the two and a half years we managed to establish a uh, cultural quarter. Uh, there is now a 
a real difference in the, in the atmosphere in the quarter. For example, there is a much heightened social cohesion. We have a lot of social groups from the local quarter engaged in various activities. Um, we also revitalized uh, quite a considerable amount of degraded areas in the local quarter. And uh, these are all activities that even when Sostenuto ends will continue in some or other form. So this is uh, something that I'm especially proud of, namely that you know, the activities that we are doing won't stop immediately when the EU money stops coming in. And um, yeah, well, we also gained uh, a lot of you know, know-how and uh, we expanded the professional networks. And as uh, Ferdinand mentioned earlier, you know, two years is really a short time if you want to make some bigger changes in the community. And so in the last time, I mean, I mean in the last few months, I'm trying to think of uh, Sustenuto as just the first step. And um, we'll be also, actually we're applying with another project also to the structural funds that will have the same focus and we'll try to sort of take a step further from what we've done in Sostenuto. Uh, we'll also be uh, regenerating uh, certain, certain uh, territories through culture. And um, yeah, I think we capitalized a lot also as, the, as an organization and um, you know, we proved to you know, the local residents in our quarter, to professionals that we work with and also to decision makers that um, you know, we can go beyond the limit of just pure artistic production and it is possible to go uh, trans sector and to tackle issues from all other sectors too. Thank you. Maybe I'll just uh, use this opportunity since we are working in the same organization. That one of the the unique thing which happened with this, for example, also when we are talking to this relationship with authorities, we we are also have a much closer relationship with the, with them. It was quite a precedence uh, precedence. For example, they they would give us uh, uh, one the um, devastated area for free. It was. Already in the term of law, it was it was a process of one year. How they could make a contract with us with, that they give us a, a land to use for temporary for temporary use, which is also unique and can now continue for maybe other areas. Uh, already we we know that other people wants to make community gardens and revitalization of parks now. And another thing is also that um, some of partners, at least uh, with uh, Tanya, with uh, um, we. We deposed another project, uh, and maybe we are trying to um, to transmit this experience and bring it more into the southeast region with the new project, which is more even more focused on revitalization of um, of the cities through culture and uh, cross fingers it works out because as as you all said, two years it's really short time, and it would be pity to stop it like that in the middle so so it means new 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 kind of collaborations also. Um, I would maybe, since you have been all here and you didn't have a chance to talk, I would maybe use another 15 minutes and give the, the, give the word to you uh, for questions, either for us or for, 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 um, for the, the speakers from before. Otherwise, it makes it too, too, much, too much two sides again. Let's try to make it more participatory also, if you agree. Doesn't, do anybody has a question or comment? Yes, please. I want to say that um, I actually got in contact with this particular program a few days ago while preparing for a conference in Berlin. And um, I want to say that um, I'm beginning to appreciate the fact that my coming here is a blessing. Uh, I have noted something about what you said, particularly about culture being used as a framework for governance, uh, which is very innovative to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I specifically, in relation to Africa, mm -hmm. I want to ask how this uh, framework, this model can be adopted, <laughs> particularly by regional uh, organizations in Africa, particularly when we consider the fact that for now, um, 
the idea of regional integration is um, going to extinction in Africa. I'm telling you this. Uh, how do we how do we explore this type of framework mm -hmm. with a view to uh, enhancing the socio-economic development of the of the continent? Secondly, I don't know if I will be tasking you beyond your mandate. Um, I mean the sustainable project. How you can go into partnership with some of these regional organizations or outfits in Africa, or particularly civil society organizations, NGOs. Um, they are doing very well in the region. And um, I'm saying this though pathetically, that uh, many people, majority of Africans, are seeing a kind of a substitute in uh, these NGOs for uh, non-performing governments that spread across the continent. So how, how can you explore this um, in terms of uh, cultural diplomacy? Uh, I don't know, thank you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big question. <laughs> and I'm, I, this is, like at the beginning, I would say that the project was bigger than us somehow. It's, <laughs> even this question is, I think, bigger. But so, I, I mean, inside the, the project as such, so Sanuto is finishing now, but the, some, let's say, some knowledge is gained, and I think we are all really very happy to share it with you anytime. Huh? I mean, if that's the, I don't, but on the other hand, I don't know for, for the programs, uh, or are there any concrete programs between uh, European Commission and uh, Nigeria, or, you know, to, that they, they could facilitate this kind of exchange of knowledge. Uh, I don't know, this is something maybe, maybe you know. Uh, one in Ljubljana, mm. one in Paris, it's a, something like an academy, a mm. uh, university, and this one. And uh, uh, in, for example, during the, the meeting in Paris, we have invited quite a lot of people from outside Europe, mm. because it's quite important to look at Europe from um, this outside point of view. Mm. And uh, mainly, uh, the, the relationship with Africa is one of the important point for EU and for Africa, definitely for the both sides. And this issue of cooperation, these issues of uh, economic development, social cooperation, all these kind of uh, topics are really important to, to think from a globalized point of view. So tomorrow we will introduce uh, the publication and really this globalized views, this globalized base of our analysis is really uh, very, very very strong in this uh, project. Uh, and for, for the SCP, uh, for the cooperation between EU and Africa, we, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that we don't have so much program. At the moment, men, the, the two main uh, cultural programs are more dedicated to creative industries or cultural industries in regard really to sustain, uh, to involve uh, <laughs> the development of these industries, the two economic sectors. The exchange of knowledge, of uh, know-how, of this kind of thing are not so obvious. You have some partners, some place, some, uh, we work quite a lot with some people from Senegal or from uh, different countries, but the EU program are definitely not so open to this exchange at the moment. Mm -hmm. Some something exists, but I can go uh, give to you some uh, very precise information. Also, I will give the word to, to Ferdinand. Just also, just one thing that there is uh, all the conference or, or forum which happened in Ljubljana, ready to change, where there is really very concrete experiences, also from Africa uh, or India, or uh, where where we had the concrete examples where arts or culture really concretely made some change in the society and which was strongly debated through university. Everything it's all, and some, some lectures are really very inspiring, like, like I don't know, on even which helps us as a, as a, as a cultural sector to give us more argument for us. Uh, one of those is new indicators of wealth, I would say, for example. We, everybody, uh, what, everybody's continuously asking us, what do, do we get out of it? And now, now, now finally, uh, there are there are new criteria how to, how to how to measure the wealth, which is not just based on money, or more money makes provide more happiness, but also that that uh, the other criteria as environment, culture are extremely important, and how we live together, the quality of it. Ferdinand, sorry. No, just very shortly to um, uh, inform you, if you don't know about that already, that there are not only EU fundings for this kind of things 
for example, UNESCO has got this new uh, International Fund for Cultural Diversity, which is precisely putting as criteria what we are doing. Uh, uh, this kind of things like uh, local cultural industries, uh, local networks of local cultural industries, uh, culture in the local governance, all these um, kind of orientations are very good uh, uh, criterias to be eligible on this fund. So in this case, you don't even need a partnership, you can apply by yourself, but the, um, the issue is this local development through culture. And I think it's not very big, it's not, it's not big money, but you know, it's easy and it can be very useful. But I think things are moving uh, on that level, really. Okay. So I'm uh, Magdalena, I'm a human geographer. I'm from the Netherlands. And I'm interested actually in the, uh, in, uh, the image about Europe, European identity. So I'm wondering, did this big, I mean, it's a big cultural project, did this project influence your view on Europe as a concept, as a, about a European identity? And I mean, you were working also with other citizens. Uh, did you also see some kind of things like, hey, uh, they changed their minds about Europe because it's about med space, it's about all of these different countries? To answer the question, um, I'd like to say that perhaps it is not easy to to do this, but I will try. I think that Sostenuto and this kind of projects um, have something very positive because they try to make exchanges and dialogue easier. And this is fine. But I want to address the person that represented the commission. All these programs that promote mobility exchanges, they are fine. But years go by, and together in Europe, we still have a huge problem. A a huge number of people, of citizens, and particularly the world of culture, they laugh about Europe. They don't know anything about the construction of Europe, and they are not interested either. So we prepare programs. There are exchanges. We have mobility. We have uh, smart exchanges with very interesting people. But is there any benefit for Europe from this? Exchanges do develop a certain European uh, philosophy. But my wish would be that in this exchange and mobility programs, there should be something else. The concern to explain what are the European uh, challenges, explain the sense of everything which is not self-evident. We fund programs only for the sake of travel agents or uh, airlines. No, I don't think so. Do we? prepare these projects for the sake of uh, people that are going to have fun together. I think this is a bit weak as a reason. So we need to try to see what is the result for Europe of all this. No one talks about this, the Commission. Perhaps uh, don't, they don't even know why they choose some programs instead of other programs and what are the results of the programs for Europe. Europe is absent. We are going to develop important choices for such and such category of people, for such and such area. 
or cultural sector. But what I ask myself is, what is the benefit for Europe? It is a key question. I think it is a rude question. But I think that mm, right now we are in such a deep crisis. And there is, mm, most of all, a problem of indifference from the citizens towards Europe. And if we believe that Europe is a beautiful project, we have to fight for it. And we need that uh, men and women of culture have to realize that Europe needs them, needs their strength, their critical spirit, their proposals. But it is not just to praise Europe, but to achieve that uh, culture, men and women are aware that culture is uh, their own dream, and they need to be committed to that dream by means of this program, for example. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you.